Hello and welcome. In today's uncertain age of manufactured want, where a psychotic few ruthlessly exploit the many, we see ever-increasing cons and scams perpetrated upon us by the unconscionable satanic criminals masquerading as government. Of course, this criminality always hides behind the mask of being for the public good, which it never is. Most big league cons start out with the mark being permitted to win some money and then persuaded to invest more. Once comfortable with the initial winnings, there's a sudden mishap and the mark loses everything. The operators then depart in a manner called the blow-off or the sting, leaving the mark minus his money. The mark is expected to go on his way a little wiser and considerably poorer. Sometimes, however, individuals won't accept the monetary loss as a gain in experience. He may complain to the police, perhaps chase after the swindlers, but always without success since the system is rigged to protect injustice. It's even more tightly rigged to protect the repeat offending criminals. From the scammer's point of view, loud complaints are bad for business, so an additional phase is sometimes added at the end of proceedings to avoid averse publicity. It's called cooling the mark out. After the blow-off goes down, one of the operators stays with the mark and tries to contain outrage and anger within manageable proportions. The operator remains in the capacity of what's called a cooler, and exercises upon the mark the subtle art of consolation. An attempt is made to define the situation in a way that makes it easier to accept the inevitable and quietly fade away. The mark is given a carefully word-crafted instruction in the philosophy of taking a loss without undue upset or commotion. In this report, the Australian public is the targeted mark, where the placating coolers of oversight hearings and the Senate investigations are meant to make us feel that our system is working fine and that the likes of Fauci, Gates, Soros et al. are receiving their comeuppance. It may even convince some that the evil perpetrators of the COVID scam will soon face long overdue justice. Well, if you've not yet realised it, that's never going to happen with our compliant collective largely appeased by the government's for entertainment only punch and duty political theatre. As usual, people become quietly transformed into uncomplaining mugs, forever tolerating genocidal oppression without putting up a fight. This unhappy fact certainly applies to the majority, but thankfully not to all. An exponentially gathering percentage of situation alert and spiritually aware identify these genocidal crimes against humanity for what they are and for what they inevitably lead to. Unfortunately, a significant percentage of our community will go to their graves refusing to accept the uncomfortable fact that they've been mercilessly conned for centuries. These imbecilic morons are readily identified as the ones still wearing utterly useless self-harming face masks for no reason whatsoever. While I perceive such abhorrent cowardice as unforgivable, it comes down to a matter of free will choice, even though such decisions result from institutionalised perception management and expert brainwashing. We all have eyes to see and ears to hear and making informed use of these priceless faculties to discern demonstrable fact from demonic fiction is the responsibility of each and every one of us. Admittedly, such critical discernment is not always easy, but failure is an option when the consequences are of biblical proportion. In the here and now, it's important to remember that without exception, tyranny corrupts good ethics and compels suppressed people to focus exclusively on basic needs like feeding, drinking, and basic security such as affordable housing. These powerful distractions make distinguishing between good and evil in all issues difficult. This in turn creates a fertile breeding ground for corruption, 
deception, fear, hypocrisy, and insincerity that's already caused a tragic loss of individual freedom and autonomy. The government and its terminally corrupted lapdog media use fear and intimidation to maintain power, creating a culture of fear and unresisting silence. When an ill-prepared action against tyranny fails, it encourages further division and strife within the community. It should also be noted that removing one tyrant often leads to the rise of more extreme oppression from another source which requires eternal vigilance on our part. We clearly see the contemptuous disregard for human rights and the community's well-being that's inflicted social disorder and injustice and justice breakdown. The wrongful jailing of a whistleblower David McBride demonstrates the current authorities no longer act within legal authority and their unconscionable actions are not subject to the rule of law. There's no accountability or justice. They've ruthlessly usurped the rule of law into an instrument of brutal plunder, and without authentic law, we are deprived of our hitherto constitutional democracy. It simply no longer exists, having been trampled beneath the goose-stepping jackboots of globalism. These undeniable facts highlight the devastating consequences of an obedient public following the dictates of globalist tyranny, ultimately leading to the obliteration of social order, justice, free speech and individual freedom. While some may howl derision at this statement, the facts are borne out by the shameful example of government refusing to publicise the official list of 28 known pedophiles currently or previously functioning in senior positions of Parliament, higher echelon police and the judiciary. What sort of a society protects those committing the most heinous crimes imaginable? The unforgivably monstrous sexual abuse of defenceless minors and infants, even babies, well, we know what sort of low-life subhuman does that. And no sane individual, unafflicted by the satanic curse of pedophilia, would countenance such criminal malfeasance of public office. In addition, why do we compliantly tolerate the daily extortion of speed cameras that do not uphold row safety, but exclusively facilitate institutionalised racketeering? I previously detailed how magistrates' courts are nothing more than re-engineered charnel houses designed to bleed the community dry, dry via more unlawful extortion while disingenuously operating under the colour of law. Nothing reported here can be disproven or denied. What masquerades as a police service only exists to protect the transnational crime gang calling itself government. These mercenary corporate police imposters will never instigate authentic investigations into any of the above as they remain a key part of the problem, more so than any other corrupted institution. Throughout the COVID scam, many serving police were unable to reconcile institutionalised oppression and unjust fines with their own moral integrity and, subsequent, and subsequently quit in droves. Many more no longer able to impose set quotas of infringements for the sole purpose of extortion, while unable to officially object to such blatant racketeering, also departed, leaving a morally vacuous plethora of illegal order-following Nazified bullies. No decent human soul can sanction shielding pedophile-protecting criminals because it defiles the office of the protector and renders them knowingly complicit in crimes against humanity. I doubt we're likely to get any satisfactory outcome from toothless political inquiries. But at some point, our satanic oppressors will get their dues. This can only happen when sufficient activists join the fight, because, for the moment, frontline troops are numerically insufficient. Our resistance force of unified, non-compliant campaigners expands in lockstep, with the progressive failure of globalism's treasonous narrative. Be assured we will ultimately prevail against this satanic evil. In closing, please note that our authentic rule of law will be restored a whole lot sooner 
once everyone faces the undeniable truth and collectively confronts this ongoing globalist-driven genocide. Thank you.